Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhad. In this session, we would look at introduction to foreign currency transaction. We would look at brief historical overview as well as basic terms you need to be familiar with. This topic is covered in international accounting for course as well as international finance. CPA exam, the FAR section, as well as the ACCA exam. As always, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn. YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have 1,500 plus accounting, auditing, and tax lecture. If you like my lectures, please like them. It helped me tremendously. Share them, put them in playlist, let the world know about them. If you like them, it means other people might like them as well. So share the wealth. This is my Instagram account. Please follow me on Instagram as I'm trying to grow my following. This is my Facebook and this is my website. On my website, if you'd like to support the channel, you do have the option to donate. I always have offers on my website. Right now, Becker CPA Review is offering a discount on their CPA course. Please check it out if you are interested. By looking at a brief overview of a historical background about international trade and foreign exchange. International trade right now represent the significant portion of the world economy. So most countries, most companies, they sell in outside their territory and most countries they buy supplies from outside their national territory therefore we have to have a foreign exchange rate because when you trade when you buy or when you sell in other country you have to use their currency therefore you have to have a foreign exchange rate and that's the price to which you pay for a particular foreign currency for example one us dollar today one usd one us dollar would buy you uh, for example, dollar thirty of Canadian dollar. This is the exchange rate. Okay. Now you have to understand that the mechanism for the exchange rate has evolved over the years. After World War II, from 1945 to 1973, the exchange rate was fixed. So countries fixed the par value of their currency in terms of U.S. dollar within one or one plus or minus one percent. What does that mean? It means your foreign currency can is equivalent to a certain dollar amount and that dollar amount is fixed it did not change versus today we're going to see the the prices of currencies fluctuate up up and down now also the us dollar value was fixed in terms of gold so so the ounce of gold equal to 35 dollars for for 35 dollars you can buy an ounce of gold so that was the rate for the us dollar then other currencies were fixed against that rate now what happened is us gold reserve declined substantially from 24 billion in 1949 to 10 billion in 1971 as foreign currencies exchanged their US dollar into gold because you could exchange $35 and get one ounce of gold. And what was happening, foreign countries they were exchanging US dollar into gold and the gold reserve, the US gold reserve went down. So what happened, we changed the system. In 1973, the gold standard system was abolished and the currency began to float. Float means they can trade. They can trade, it means the price of the currency could go up, the price of the currency could go down, depending on interest rate, supply and demand, macroeconomic, macroeconomic factors, the level of inflation in that particular country. So we abolished this, this, uh, this fixed system to a, to a float system. Currency arrangement, right now we have three systems. We have an independent float, Pact system and European monetary system. Let's talk about those three currency arrangements. What is independent float? Independent float is the is when the value of the currency is allowed to fluctuate up and down according to market forces. So the market determine the price of your currency with little of no intervention from the central bank. Sometimes the central bank might intervene, but it's it's not the main determinant of your prices. Uh, who would use a float currency? The U.S., Australia, Canada, Japan, Mexico, Sweden. Most advanced uh, economies. Uh, use a float uh, float system basically they would like their currency float and let the market forces determine the price of that currency another system is called the pegged system packed to another currency here the value of the currency is packed it means it's fixed in terms of a particular foreign currency and the central bank intervene as is necessary to maintain the fixed value think of it as the previous system where your currency is fixed in terms of us dollar for example several countries such as hong kong panama jordan saudi arabia and among among other pegged their currency to the us dollar for example they might say uh you know 50 units of our currency equal to one usd and what happened is if the prices go up or if the prices go down the central bank will either buy 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 more of their local currency or sell more of their local currency to bring it back to 50 unit per dollar okay some systems like the eu basically you can see it's in 
European monetary system, you have to understand in 1998, the, country, the countries comprising the EU adopted a common currency called the Euro and established European Central Bank. Up until 2002, local currencies such as the German franc and the, the German mark and the French franc continued to exist, but they were fixed in, in terms of the Euro. So basically now they're gone. Basically, the German mark and the, uh, and the French franc, basically they're all... Uh, they, they all are translated or they are all converted into euros. Okay, January 1st, 2002, I still remember that day, local currencies disappeared and the euro became effective in 12 European countries. Okay, in, 19, 19, 30, 19, in 2013, 17 countries were members of the EU zone, the, U, the EU zone. Okay, so the value of the EU fluctuate against US dollar and fluctuate against other currencies as well. So now the EU basically its own, the, it's it's uh, it has its own uh, currency, basically a single currency. We have to understand that foreign exchange rate fluctuate on a regular basis. It means it goes up and it goes down. The difference between buying and selling a foreign currency is called a spread. Now, what do we mean by spread? Spread is is how banks and foreign exchange brokers like those people that you see them at airports earn a profit on a foreign exchange now what is it, the spread so um the spread basically they will have something called bid ask or sometimes they call it bid offer okay and it's, it's something to that effect for example let's assume i want to travel let, let me show you maybe some currency Okay, let's assume I want to travel to Canada. I go to the bank and I, I notice, let's see the Canadian dollar here. They would say, the Canadian dollar, you pay um, 0.7869. I'm going to explain this in a moment. Well, before we go to the bid ask, let's talk about the direct quote. Okay, so we'll, we'll come back to the spread in a moment. So what is a direct quote? The direct quote is the US dollar per one unit of foreign currency. For example, here, one US dollar will buy you dollar 27 i'm using the canadian dollar as well this is the direct quote the inverse of the direct quote is the indirect quote where how much you will need okay how much you will need uh to buy a canadian dollar you would need 78 pennies to to buy a canadian dollar so the price could be direct let me show you an indirect so so if you have a direct price one dollar equal to dollar 27 if you take one divided by 1.27 you will find out how much you will need in your currency to buy a foreign currency so you will need 78 pennies 78 point 78 point six nine seven five pennies to buy one canadian dollar okay now if you go to the bank and you will tell them well you're traveling to canada and you say i would like to buy I would like to buy $100 or $1,000 worth of, uh, convert $1,000 US dollar into Canadian money, okay? Well, what you're doing now is you are buying. So if you are buying, they might say the price, the bid is 0 0.7, 0 0.78, 0 0.78, let's just make it 0.78. So what does that mean? It means if you want to convert uh, $1,000 you have to pay you will convert them for every Canadian dollar you'll pay 0.78 so let's see how much is that so $1,000 divided 0.78 you'll be able to get $1,282 Canadian so you can get $1,282 I believe let me just double check 82 Canadian that's the bid. Let's assume you walk outside the bank and you get a call from your company and say, you know what? We really need you this weekend. You can't, sorry, you can't go to Canada. You just, you have to cancel that trip. You know, we need you for something. One of the clients called and you'd say, okay, you'll, you'll, walk, you'll walk inside the bank and you would say, okay, here's $1,882 Canadian. I want to, I want one, I want my $1,000 back. They would say, oh, no problem. Our offer is point seven five you would say i just i just converted i just converted one thousand usd into one thousand two hundred and eighty two now let's now convert the canadian back to the uh, back to us dollar and they would say the offer or the ask is 0.75 well let's do that so we're going to take the money 
the Canadian money that you have multiplied by 0.75 and we're going to give you back $961.50. Now we're going to give you back 961.50 USD. I was just here 10 minutes ago. Well, it doesn't matter. This is how they make profit. This is what the spread is. When you buy and when you sell, there's a difference between the prices. They don't buy and sell at the same price. They want to make the profit and the profit is the spread. So the spread here is three pennies. The spread here is three pennies. You just left the bank and you get a phone call. You came back. You wanted to get your US dollar back. They will not give it back to you at 0.78. They would only convert it at 0.75. So if you want to buy um, US dollar, they would say, well, we're going to sell it at 0.75. Okay. So that's that's what the bid 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 offer or, or the spread is the difference between the bid and the ask or the bid and the offer. Remember, be for buy when you want to buy. Okay, so this is how they make their profit. Again, foreign currency can be can have a direct quote. For example, how much you can get one US um, one US dollar for the foreign currency, or the inverse, how much um, how much if you want to buy one one foreign currency how much you will have to pay for example again canadian dollar you'll have to pay 78 pennies to buy to buy it okay we also need to be familiar with two terms one is called the spot rate and one is called the forward rate what's the spot rate the spot rate is the price at which a foreign currency can be purchased or sold today for example these are spot rates spot rate okay today for example this is how much you can get for the canadian dollar Okay, for every one US dollar, you get dollar twenty-seven. The forward rate, the price today that at which a foreign currency can be purchased or sold sometime in the future. Huh? Well, today is what? Today is August the nineteenth, twenty nineteen. Okay, August the nineteenth, twenty nineteen. Now, you can buy a forward exchange rate for September 20th 2019 so a month from now I need to go to Canada well guess what the price today is I can convert one US dollar into 127 Canadian well I'm not going to Canada now I'm going a month from now well a month from now I can buy a contract to be able to convert one US dollar into dollar 25 or one US dollar one US dollar into dollar thirty, depending on what the forward rate is. If the forward rate is less than the spot rate, we call it a discount. It means the foreign currency is selling at a discount. If it's above, it means it's selling at a premium. Now we don't have to worry about why it's a discount or a premium. They just know it exists. Now you might be saying, why wouldn't you? Why would you buy it at dollar thirty if you can buy it today at dollar twenty-seven? I don't need it today. I need it a month from now. And month from now, I fear that the price could be dollar forty. Therefore. I'm happy to buy it at dollar twenty-five, or why don't you buy it at dollar twenty-five and lock your price? Well, because there is a risk there. But on September twentieth, a month from now, the price could be dollar twenty, and I could lose. So, what you have the option of locking your prices into the future. Okay, the forward rate can exceed the spot rate. It's called selling at a premium. The forward rate can be less than the spot rate. It's sold at a discount. Okay, let's assume the spot rate today is dollar twenty-seven. And one month forward rate is dollar twenty-five. Therefore, what I did, I purchased, I, I purchased the forward rate at dollar twenty-five. Let's assume we'll work two examples. Assuming you are an exporter, assuming you are an importer, because those are the two options. Let's assume I'm a U.S. exporter. Simply put, I sell product, and let's assume I sell product to Germany, and I'm going to be receiving one hundred thousand euros one month from now. So I sold some parts to a German company, but they're going to pay me thirty days from now. Well, guess what? 30 days from now, I really have no clue what's going to happen to the euro. Today, the euro is $1.27, but I don't have the euro. I don't have the money in my hand, so I cannot convert. I'm going to get the money later, a month later. So what I would do, I would buy a forward contract at $1.25. Why would I do so? So when I get my euros, I can convert them at $1.25. Okay? What could happen between now and and uh, and a month from now a month from now the spot rate when i receive that money could be dollar 29. guess what if it's dollar 29 it's it it worked against me because if i did not buy the the co contract if i did not buy the contract if i take one hundred thousand euro times dollar 29 out of get one hundred and twenty nine thousand us dollar now i'm only getting 125 because i logged in my rate at 125. well if the rate if the spot rate was dollar 20 then i did good 
If the spot rate is $1.20, I can convert at $1.25. So rather than getting $1.20, I'm getting $1.25. So that's why you would buy the forward contract because you don't know what the spot rate a month from now would be. It could be $1.29, it could be $1.20. You don't want to take that risk, you buy the dollar twenty-five. Now, this is assuming you are an exporter. So if you are an exporter, if you are selling, if you are selling and receiving a foreign currency, you want your home currency, you want the US dollar to weaken. You want the US dollar to weaken. Okay? Now let's assume you are an importer. Importer, you are buying. And let's assume the opposite. You are buying from a German company and you have to pay them one hundred thousand one hundred thousand euros. Now today you can buy it at dollar twenty-five, or you can buy a contract to buy it at dollar. Today you can buy it at dollar twenty-seven. That's the spot rate, or you can buy a forward contract and buy it at dollar twenty-five. Let's assume you did buy the contract, so you are you are only responsible for coming up with one hundred and twenty-five thousand. What could happen in the future? The price could be dollar twenty-nine. You did good. You locked your price. You locked your price at dollar twenty-five, and now that the the spot rate is dollar twenty-nine. That's good, or Guess what? The spot rate could be dollar twenty, and you overpaid five thousand dollars. If you waited, then you would have had only had to pay one twenty, but you would have be take you would have been taking that risk. Okay. So notice the forward rate. They, they it can help you to hedge your risk. But the thing about the forward rate, the forward market is you have to exercise that price. You have to buy. You have to exchange. The foreign currency, either exchange it, buy it, or sell it at that particular foreign fo foreign currency rate, forward rate. Okay. Now, is there a better option? Well, there is. There is option contract, which is a little bit different, similar but more flexible than the forward contract. So, options are more flexible than forward contract. Why? Because a foreign currency option gives the holder the option, the option, but not the obligation to trade the foreign currency into the future. So, what you would do. You will you will have the option. You will have the option. What does that mean? It means let's go back. If you are a U.S. importer, let's go back to this example. If you are a U.S. importer and you have an option to buy it at dollar twenty-five, you have an option now. But the price is dollar twenty. You would let your option expire and you buy it at dollar twenty. So it gives you that option. You don't have to buy it at dollar twenty-five. The forward contract you have to buy it at dollar twenty-five. So you ha you have an option now. Guess what? You have to pay a price for that option. There's a price for that option. So it's not free. There's a price for it. We have two types of option. We have a put option. Put option refer to the sale of foreign currency by the holder of the option. When do you buy a put options? When you are an exporter. So if you're an exporter, you will buy a put option. Why? Because it gives you the right to sell the foreign currency at, at a particular rate. Okay. Or you can buy a call option. A call option refer to the purchase of a foreign currency in the future. That's if you are an importer. Importer means you're going to have to pay the German company. Uh, in euros. Therefore, what you do is you buy a call option to have the option to buy that pro to buy the currency at a certain price. So, if you are an importer, you will buy a call option. Generally speaking, there's something called the strike price. So, you need to know what a put option is, call option is. What is a strike price? It's the strike price is the exchange rate at which the option will be executed if the holder of the option decide to exercise the option. So, the strike price could be dollar twenty-five. This is the strike price okay you can buy it or sell it whether you have an option or a call at dollar 25 okay the strike price is similar to the forward rate i just told you there are generally several strike prices to choose from at any particular time there's always different strike prices because you can buy different options most foreign currency options are purchased directly from a bank in the so-called over-the-counter market but they can also be purchased from the philadelphia stock exchange and the chicago mercantile exchange by the way i pass next to the philadelphia stock exchange on almost daily basis when i go to work so you can buy those options you can buy those options Okay, now as I said, unlike forward contract where bank earns a profit through the spread, okay, the option must actually be purchased by by paying an option premium. So you have to pay a premium. You have to pay a price. Maybe to buy those one hundred thousand dollar, you have to pay a premium of three thousand dollar, or two thousand dollar, or a thousand dollar, or five thousand dollar, depending on the option that you are getting. Okay, so there's a premium. There's a price for that. Okay, so the option premium is it has two functions an intrinsic value function and a time value function. So how much do you pay 
and premium they are, is, is, is depending on how long is the contract. Okay, the longer you want the contract to be, the longer you, not the, yeah, the option contract, the longer you want it to be, the more you pay. Because the more you say, I want an option to buy within the next three years, well, guess what? You're going to have to pay a lot of premium to have that option. But if you want an option for one month, it's going to cost you less. This is the time value. What is the intrinsic value? The intrinsic value equal to the gain that could be realized by exercising the option immediately. Often time, when you buy an option, it's, it has, it, often time, it has no intrinsic value. It, in other words, if you exercise it today, you don't make any profit. Okay. For example, if the spot rate of a foreign exchange currency is a dollar, a call option with a strike price of 97 has an intrinsic value of three pennies. Why it's three pennies? Because you can, because it has a value, and the value is called in, is intrinsic. Because immediately you can buy it at 97, and the price is a dollar. This usually does not does not happen. If it happens, most probably you paid maybe three pennies premium per 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 currency. Okay, if you pay three penny premiums, hey, they would let you buy that 97, but you already paid them three pennies. So you are, it has no intrinsic value. Generally speaking, when you buy the option, generally speaking, immediately, it does not have any intrinsic value. When it has intrinsic value is when, when you can convert it and make a profit. Whereas a put option, which is to sell a foreign currency with a strike price of a dollar or less, has an intri intrinsic value equal to zero. So if you have a put option and you went to sell the foreign currency and you can sell it at dollar or less, it has no value because you can sell it at a dollar without the option. But if it's a call option, it has an intrinsic value of three pennies. An option with a int positive intrinsic value is said to be in the money. An option that has no intrinsic value, it says to be out of the money, obviously. The opposite. If it has no intrinsic value. What is the time value? As I said, the longer you have, the more time you have for that option, the more value it has because between now and the time you you exercise that uh, this option the longer the time the more options because time is valuable so the the time value of an option related to the fact that the spot rate can change over time and cause the option to become in the money so the more time you have the more options you have and options are good the longer your options the more value they have okay as they get closer and closer to the to the end date then the chance of that currency fluctuating much more is less because you have less time Okay. Even though a 90 day call option with a strike of a dollar has zero intrinsic value, when the spot rate is dollar, it still have a positive time value because you still have 90 days for that currency to change. Because now it's a dollar, but if it goes up to dollar fifty, well you can buy it for a dollar. Okay? You can buy it for a dollar, it could go up to dollar fifty. But you have ninety days, or it could go up to dollar ten or to dollar oh five or something above a dollar. You have ninety days for that to change. The more time you have the more options you have. So the option has two values. It, it has two components, <coughs> an intrinsic value, and the intrinsic value is how much profit would you make if you exercise it today immediately. And the time value is depending on how long you have, how much time you have between now and the time it expires. Okay. So the value of a foreign currency option can be determined by applying something called the black shoal option pricing model, which is we don't cover in this course. This is covered in international finance course. And it's a function of the difference between the spot rate and the strike price, the difference between domestic and foreign interest rate, the length of time to expiration, potential volatility, macroeconomic factors, and other things. So the black shoal model is just basically, it's a formula that they use to value the option. And this is basically what I'm going to cover in this chapter. If you have any questions, this is basically an introduction to foreign currency transaction. In the next session, we're going to start to work actual actual journal entries for buying and selling uh, product in, in, in a foreign currency. If you have any questions, email me. If you happen to visit my website for additional lectures, please consider donating. If you're studying for your CPA exam, as always, study hard. It's worth it.